kitchen, a pot of guinea hen. It's in the kitchen, a pot of guinea hen. It's in the kitchen, a pot of guinea hen. It's in the kitchen, you know the pot of guinea hen. It's in the kitchen, a pot of guinea hen. It's in the kitchen, a pot of guinea hen. It's in the kitchen, a pot of guinea hen. It's in the kitchen, a pot of guinea hen. It's in the kitchen, you know the pot of guinea hen. It's in the kitchen, a pot of guinea hen. It's in the kitchen, a pot of guinea hen. Cooking on a Budget. My name is Donna McCardle. I'm from Bridge End Farmhouse, and uh, it's, uh, it's that time. It's Tuesday, and uh, we're on a currently on a Scottish seasonal theme. And today, well, I was actually requested. Um, someone asked me if I would like to show them how to make cranikin, and I did actually make it earlier today for the community lunch. So I'm just going to do that for you first, and then because I've got extra oatmeal, I'm also going to do some pan-fried fish just to talk about how that's a really lovely light meal in the summer um, and you can use breadcrumbs and all sorts of things. But let's get started on the important part, the cranikin. So, traditionally, and what you should really use if you're making it properly, is uh, what we call pinhead oatmeal. So, like porridge oats, but much, um, a much short, you know, from the oat. Um, it's straight, it's not been processed like porridge oats are, or it hasn't been part cooked or anything. It's just a really lovely, lovely, lovely product that can be used for all sorts of things, but we'll talk about that a wee while. Uh, we've got our sign this week. Are you, there you go, cooking on a budget. So, first thing you've got to do if you're making cranikin is that you can't just put straight dry oatmeal into your other ingredients. You have to actually cook it very slightly and roast it. Excuse me, now you can do that in the oven, but you can also do it on the cooker, on the pan. So I'm just going to pour a wee bit in here. We don't, you don't want too much oatmeal. And we've only got a small tub of double cream. Okay, so that looks about right. Just enough to cover the bottom of the pan. And then we shall put that over there, out of the way. And we're going to turn this up. And we're just going to... Now, the secret is to cook it really slowly. You don't want it too hot. You don't want to burn it. Um, because otherwise it won't taste very nice. So, while that's warming and cooking, I'm going to get the rest of the ingredients ready. So, we've got double cream. Very important to use double cream because of its fat content. Um, if you tried to use single cream, it wouldn't whisk, it wouldn't thicken. But double cream has got enough fat content in it, so if you want to whisk it by hand, you don't need a mixer. Um, just get yourself, I got this cheap whisk today for a pound, a pound land, so they're not expensive, but as you know from the previous weeks, they're a very, very handy piece of kit to have. So, just, I'm, I'm going to be multitasking here, I'm going to be shaking my pinhead oatmeal and whisking double cream at the same time, so let's see if we can do it. So, the double cream goes in the bowl, 
and then we're going to dispose of that. And then we're going to, I hope I can do this by hand. Oh, I can smell the oatmeal. You can smell the oatmeal cooking. It's lovely. It's a lovely ingredient. And oatmeal can be used for all sorts of things. You can actually make your own granola from oatmeal. Um, so you can sort of cook it up a bit. Um, and then the other thing you can do with oatmeal is you, you obviously can make porridge from it because all it is is a just a bit sort of, um, it just needs a bit more uh, cooking than porridge oats, which are designed to cook much more quickly. So hang on, just going to get the lid out of there. So your main, your, your basic ingredients for Kranikin are double cream, pinhead oatmeal. You can, as I say, use porridge oats, which I did at Bridgen today because we didn't have any, we didn't have extra oatmeal. So basically I'm whisking away here. I'm going to give this a sugar because you really are just lightly toasting it. You don't want to burn it. And uh, as I say, you can use porridge oats. In fact, I went to visit someone a couple of weeks ago and the young lady that was making the, the pannikin, and that's what she was doing, was cooking porridge oats in a pan that I'm doing with a pinhead and it was lovely. And today's was lovely as well. So as I say, you can definitely, um, so might be here a while with double cream. I think it was cold enough. What happens with double cream is that you, you, you seem like you're hard at it for a wee while and then suddenly you can feel the whisk, you can feel a bit of pressure and you can you, you realise it's just about to kind of, as I say, turn. It's quite easy to over whisk as well, so once you feel that the, the liquid's firming up and you um, can feel it feeling a bit, starting to get a bit thicker, you would basically... Now, that smells lovely. It really doesn't take much. You are literally just warming it slightly and you can smell the difference. Um, it really brings out the flavour of the oatmeal and the porridge oats. It was the same at work at, uh, when I made it earlier today. And you just, I mean, you can actually roast it in the oven if you like on a tray, but you just need to keep an eye on it because you don't want it too dark. The other thing is you kind of want to, you kind of want to make sure that it's cooled down as well because you don't want to put it into the cream because that might kind of curdle your, um, curdle your dessert. So we're just going to keep going with this. Get the cream wet. So we're nearly there. We're ready to go. Kind of hoping that this one will be a bit shorter today because uh, you've all been very brave if you've watched the previous ones and lasted a whole hour. But we've been doing lots on them. So hopefully you've picked up some good techniques between pastry, crumble, all sorts of things. Can you use the fire, what, as in gas, or, um, right, okay. So will I change, um, right, I'm gonna be, I've been asked to change to the gas hob again, so I'm gonna do that. So. Okay, so. To be honest with you, I'd rather cook the fish on here anyway. So, I'll keep whisking away. This is a bit coming. Now, when you make syllabab, you are better to make it and then leave it. Um, today, I made it straight away and then we served it fairly quickly. What I'm going to do is, I'm conscious that this is hotter and higher than the induction hub. I actually think that's cooked enough, so I'm going to leave that because that's one less thing to worry about. And then we're going to concentrate on this cream. And actually, you know what? It's just about coming. It's not far off it. As I say, you can actually, there's another quite traditional dessert that I used to make a long time ago when I was a catering manager at Portsmouth Crown Court. All the judges and barristers loved it and it was an older dessert, it was called syllabab. And it's the same principle, you take double cream and then what you do is you take citrus fruits and you put zest of lemon or lime or orange or all three if you wish and you pop that through double cream with a tiny amount of white wine instead of whiskey, that's the other important ingredient in Kranikin. That cream's just coming. And then you put sugar in it, and it's just the, the, yeah, the cream, the fruit, the sugar, and a wee bit of white wine. And it's also a very lovely, light dessert, and it doesn't need gelatine. You know, it doesn't really, you know, it's, uh, as I say, it's a lovely summery dessert. So just in case you fancied making something like that with double cream instead of the Kranikin, if you didn't like oats or whatever. Now, what I will say is, although we're coming into the season with berries, we actually, 
Raspberries, we're not quite there yet. We've got a wee bit to go on the raspberries because the ones we bought today were quite expensive. But if you give it another month or so, they get much cheaper and you're far more likely to get Scottish raspberries as well. So this cream's just about there. Now to sweeten this, what we do is perfect. That's just about. Can you see that? That's gorgeous. You want it firm enough because you are actually going to introduce other elements into this. If this was just for putting on a dessert, that would be fine. But you don't, you need to have it a reasonable thickness because you're going to add things that are going to kind of dilute it slightly. So you want to make sure it's firm. Right, there you go. Can you see the difference in that? That's wonderful. So, I noticed I said so a lot yesterday, last week, so I'm trying not to say it. But <laughs> so we're going to put our oatmeal in here. And that's, yeah, that's, okay. Right, to sweeten it, you put honey in with your oatmeal. And you just pour some in like that. And that will cool it down a wee bit as well, because this is cold. Oh, it's cooking. <laughs> so there we go. We've put our toasted pinhead oatmeal in with the honey. And that smells absolutely gorgeous and then the other ingredient that you put in cranikin it's really simple dessert and it's really quick and it's just super everybody i don't know everybody loves cranikin for some reason and you only need a tiny amount of um whiskey but you can use brandy if you didn't have um spirits in the house which i don't ever have you could put a tiny wee bit of white wine but not too much because remember the more liquid you put in this the more you're going to water your cream down so I'm basically just going to put a tiny wee splish. Now our film crew haven't had Kraviken, so <laughs> I think we're going to have converts after this, but there we go. So, put a tiny wee bit of whiskey in here now. And that looks lovely, that's going to look really beautiful through the cream. And then the last thing, oh, sorry, I'm just getting a whiff of the alcohol up the back of my throat, wow not used to spirits. So the last thing we've got are the raspberries. If you can get them from a neighbour's garden, even better. I've got some in my garden actually, so I'm looking to have an abundance of raspberries last year, which was lovely. So I, when I made it earlier today, I actually put the raspberries in with the oatmeal and the whiskey and the honey. And that's the nice thing with honey you, um, or sugar. When you make your own puddings or cakes or desserts, uh, you can put the, the right amount of sugar in it for you, you know, because, you know, when you buy a lot of processed food, it's got way too much sugar in it. So when you make, that's the, the upside of making your own puddings is that you can make it as sweet or not as you like. Okay, so we've mixed that through with the pinhead oatmeal, the whiskey and the honey, and that's all ready to go. Now, you put this in and you, what you have to do is you have to actually, you don't want to, you want to break the raspberries up a wee bit, but if you make it, if you make them too mushy, you don't end up with the texture in it, so. So, I'm going to now, whoops, I'm going to pop this in here, like so, and then we're going to stir that around. Just really slowly fold it in like you were mixing meringue or something and it's oh wow looks absolutely divine you can actually make raspberry cranic and cheesecake same principle but you would put cream cheese in it now i've just realized i can see that the, the oatmeal is still a wee bit warm but what we'll do is we're just going to mix that through so there's fruit and whiskey and oatmeal mix all through it evenly and then we're going to Look at that. See how simple that was. Beautiful. How to impress your friends. Make the cranking from scratch. It's so simple and it really didn't take long. Um, as I say, you're probably better to toast your oatmeal and then make sure it's stone cold before you add, add it to your cream because it can actually make your cream kind of disintegrate if it's too warm. But what I'm going to do now, if you mix, you can see now the berries are starting to break and you'll end up with it too pink. And it, well, you can make it as pink as you like or you can break it up if you want. But I, do, I think cranikin, you don't want it too pink because then it looks, doesn't look as nice. So there's our cranikin, all done. Just like that, really simple. So now for what I did today at Bridge End, I popped it in dishes and then 
I put some raspberries on the top and then I drizzled a wee bit of honey on the top of it and it was absolutely beautiful. Right. Remember, I mix it all through properly. I've got a wee bit of cream sitting there in the bottom and uh, you don't want to, you want to make sure it's all mixed. Try and get a wee bit of red up the top, put that there. And then, yeah, we'll put the rest away. So, there you go. Cranikin, how simple was that? And you can again make a similar dessert with double cream, citrus fruit, a wee bit of white wine, and a wee bit of sugar as well. So, and I will put some raspberries on the top. We'll pop them in the fridge, and then the film crew will have a lovely treat at the end um, for all their hard work, because we've got two wonderful people behind the scenes called Carmen and Eric, who are doing the hard work. I'm just getting to be glamorous on film. There you go. So remember, I would, don't ever pour honey out of a jar. Put on a wee spoon so you've got control over it, and then you just drizzle a wee bit of honey on the top, and then that'll give, so when people first bite into it, they'll go, ooh, lovely. Okay, so there you go. Cranikin, hooray. That didn't take long, did it? Oops. So we'll pop them in the fridge and they're ready to go. Voila, so quick wipe down and then I'm going to show you how to, how you can use up the rest of your pinhead oatmeal if you buy some for Cranikin. And also you can use, you can do this with breadcrumbs, so you can make breadcrumbs out of any bread. And although I use a, a, a blender at home, you can actually make breadcrumbs by letting the bread dry out a wee bit, and then you can grate it, and that makes really rough breadcrumbs, and then it's got the same principle as the oatmeal that I'm going to show you, and that is a really nice way to eat fish, it's really fresh, it's really light, and uh, I'm going to serve it with a wee side salad, and it's a lovely summer's evening meal. So, I'm putting on some oil and I'm just going to let that warm up slowly, not too high a temperature. I'll turn it up once I've got all my fish coated and ready to go. So this principle here, we have just a piece of cod I got from Aldi, very nice. Um, if you buy fish that's too thick, um, fish really takes a very short time to cook. So you really, if it's thin like that, it means it'll be a really quick meal as well. And uh, if you buy very thick fillets, you might, you know, you might not always cook it properly to the middle. So uh, try and make them quite thin if you can. So the principle of um, coating anything is that you should always have flour first. And you coat it in flour, make sure it's well covered. And then you turn it over. And then what this does is it helps make the the egg or liquid stick because actually if you're vegan and you didn't want to use eggs you can actually coat um, the fish or the chicken you can also do this with chicken it's really nice um, sorry um, so you could actually this mix could just be like a, a vegan uh, milk or something it's all you're trying to do is make sure that that, that the, either the pinhead oatmeal or the breadcrumbs are going to stick and you need that mixture so okay Right, I've been asked to move to here, just because it visually it's much easier for you to see what I'm doing. Um, so I'm doing, going to do that. And then once I've covered my fish, I'll transfer it to the hob. Yes? Yes, okay. So, so you've got your flour mix, you can use any kind of flour. Um, and then you've got your egg mix. And as I said, if you're vegan and you really wanted to not use eggs, you could use just a, a non-dairy milk. Okay, so we're going to pop this now in the egg mix and you just sit it in there for a minute and you let it soak in a wee bit. I actually did chicken the other night for a friend of mine and it was uh, again don't make your chicken too thick in case you um, basically don't cook it in the middle if it's, it's quite thin you know it's going to be cooked quite quickly because hot heat does that um, but I used a Ryan caraway bread and made breadcrumbs out of it and with the chicken it was absolutely gorgeous. So you can make it out of any bread, you can make it out of white bread, you can make it out of brown bread, you can make it out of anything. So there we go, we've got that soaked in a wee bit and we've got our lovely white fish there now. It's all well and truly coated with egg. Or as I say, you can use a dairy free milk, but it, you just need the liquid. And then 
you're going to pop it onto or into your pinhead oatmeal. So try and get all the excess off and then whack it on there. I'll get rid of this and I'm just going to, oh, that might fall. So I'm going to wash this hand. Well, is it worth washing it? If I'm going to get it sticky again. So look at that. That is lovely. So it's all coated properly. Fish cooked in oatmeal was quite a common dish when I was younger. My mum used to do it all the time. Um, she was just trying to get fibre into our children, I think. So, I've turned it over a couple of times, so that's ready now to go in the frying pan. Just kind of wash my hands, clear up a wee bit. Whoops. I think this is going to be a very short session today, folks. That's all right. Nice change for you all, instead of listening to me waddling on for an hour. Anyway, so, we'll get rid of that. Give the place a wee wipe. And this oil smells like it's cooking up. You don't want to overcook olive oil because you can burn it. I'm going to get rid of that frying pan so everybody can see what's going on. So, try not to say so. There you go. It's not working. <laughs> so we're now going to turn this up a bit because... Oh, wrong one. Hang on. That's it. Now... I always say to people, when you're putting anything in hot oil, just from a health and safety point of view, you're always better to take it off the main heat because in case you splash and it's really, really, really hot. So that's okay. Turn it up. It won't do anything to your fish. Perfect. Now you can use normal vegetable oil. You don't need to use olive oil, but I'm in a house of... People, Mediterranean and, and uh, you know, from other parts of the world, they don't have vegetable oil. <laughs> so, there we go. But you can use vegetable oil. I mean, some people say you can fry in butter, but the problem with butter is that it goes brown. So you are better sticking to an oil if you can. You can always, if you really want the flavour of butter and cooking with butter, if you put butter in a pan, put a tiny bit of oil in it, and that stops it burning. So, look at this. Now, I'm hoping they've got a fish slice. I haven't looked. <laughs> Oh, yes, sorry. Ah, look, voila. I'm going to get the plate ready. I think this is going to be the shortest cooking on a budget ever. But there you go. How are we doing for time? Now, I just got a mixed salad out of Lidl's, one of my favourites. And it's a really nice way to eat light food. When you have a mixed salad like this, you really don't really need cucumber, tomato, anything like that. You can just have it like that with a little bit of olive oil. So you, you have to fry it quite gently. The secret is now to flip it over. As I say, frying in breadcrumbs is one of my favourite ways to eat fish and chicken. It's a really easy, light meal and it's nice for the summer. We've got a tiny wee bit of chilli oil on this for our lovely crew because they'll probably appreciate it more than me. That's if I don't put chilli on it. Or you can put normal oil. But olive oil's best. Right, okay. So I'm gonna flip flip that round. There we go. Now remember fish does not take a long time to cook, so you want to just keep an eye on it. As I would say man it. Just get a wee drink here. Oh. Sometimes when I'm pan, pan frying something like this, I'll often, if I'm not sure, especially if it's chicken, it's a wee bit thick in the middle, what I quite often do, as long as I don't overbrown it, I'll quite often put it in the oven just for 10 minutes, just to, just to you know, make sure it's properly cooked on the inside. And basically the other thing that does is because because you've coated the chicken in something, it means that all the moisture coming out from the cooking stays inside and it actually makes the chicken really nice. So that's another thing you can do to make sure that your chicken's cooked right through is that you can pan fry it and then pop it in the oven. Now that's too dark, so you might lose a wee bit here and there, but we'll take that out of the equation, pop it in there. 
So we're nearly there. Is there anybody out there? Any questions? Anybody got anything they'd like to ask? I'm just going to flip that over again. And then we're nearly there. The fish doesn't take long to cook, remember. And if it's quite thin, um, we don't want it to overcook either. It's quite a delicate thing, fish. So, anyway, we've got our crannikin. We've got our, what a lovely light evening meal. And I say, crannikin's always everybody's favourite. I'm not sure why. And it's meant to be, people go, oh, Scotland, crannikin. Not sure why that is. So, I think that we're nearly there with the fish. Just going to take those bits out. I think that we're just about there, to be honest. So what did that take? Three or four minutes? And that's just, its again, it's a lovely, lovely light evening meal. And you don't want it to be much darker than that. Nearly there. That's about dark enough. I mean, you could argue vegetarian-wise, you could maybe do slices of cauliflower, or you could, you know, you could actually do it with vegetables if you like, but you'd have to make them quite thinly sliced. I, I wouldn't say that they're... I think that's probably ready. So I'm going to transfer it and switch the heat off. I'm going to transfer it now. Onto there. Perfect. Lovely. And we'll just double check our fish is cooked. Beautiful. That's beautiful. That's gorgeous. Can you see that? That is absolutely gorgeous. Because the pinhead oatmeal's kept all the moisture in. And it's, that is a lovely, lovely, as I say, a lovely, lovely light evening meal. So, I think I've done <laughs> the shortest cooking on a budget in history. Uh, but that's okay. It's been nice to do a shorter one. And... Uh, I hope you liked the funky music at the start, by the way. That was given to me by a friend a number of years ago, and we used to play it at the start of our junk food project dinners because everybody, my co-director Charlie, loved it. And so that's in honour of him that we got that song on this week. So that's it, actually. Very short one. Um, hope you're all enjoying the lovely weather. And, uh, and uh, what do you call it? I hope to see you for the last one of this four weeks. Um, we are um, still deciding what to do next week, and, uh, but we're going to be doing four weeks and then we're having a break um, for a month and then we'll be back in August. Yes, in August. So thank you very much for all of you that have been watching. Hopefully all of these sessions have helped you pick up different techniques. Um, I'm toying with the idea about maybe showing people the secret of scones and a pizza scone next week, but and that means you'll learn how to make a really nice tomato pizza sauce and which can be used for pasta, etc. So maybe that's what we'll do. Unless anyone wants to shout out or get in touch with Bridge End and say there's something else they would like to learn. And I'm glad you like the music too. It's one of my favourite tracks. It's a good, it's a good uh, cooking song. So. Thank you everybody for watching that's watched and anybody that watches it later, I hope, you've I hope you enjoy it. And uh, that's us from Cooking on a Budget this week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.